Okay, I wanted to do a little video about this, given that these are the two sort of most recent, I think, modern approaches to the floor modeler. Now, obviously, you know, on this channel, I'm a big fan of the Line 6 Helix. Um, but since that is like a seven year old device, and since I speak about Helixes all the time anyway, I figured let's just leave that out of the conversation, except to say that obviously this UI is essentially lifted from the helix right i don't think that's particularly controversial to say um 16 blocks by 16 blocks the idea of having two processing bits this is now obviously with four cores um there's a whole bunch of it which obviously the grid itself is yeah very much just taken from the idea of the helix now I wanted to start off by saying the areas that I think the quad cortex might win in this uh, particular comparison. So those are in terms of the looper. So the advantage that we've got with the quad cortex looper is that you can duplicate the first recording. Um, and I could just show you that, I guess. Now I am at least in theory partly responsible for this even being a feature on the quad cortex as Doug slid into my DMs and asked me uh, which um, looper neural should be taking a look at so if we press here we get into the looper one two three four we can duplicate like this and this is really powerful because now I can create a loop that's longer but that has more solid timing because I've done it starting from this kind of smaller uh, starting point and you know now I can just three four I do think realistically I think because of that one feature the quad cortex looper for me um, takes the cake it takes the whatever word you want to use um, that for me does make that a slightly more useful looper than you get in almost any other device except for the head rush which also you can save loops on the head rush and as well as doing sort of layer peeling back layers which is really clever um, but yeah, Quad Cortex, I think the Looper, they probably, for my money, get that slightly better. And you can quantize it and you can use a MIDI clock and you can start the loop. Um, you can arm it for recording. So it's listening and then it starts the recording from your first kind of notes. One other area that I think the Quad Cortex has an advantage is that it can do this capturing thing. Though I think if you were listening to the introduction there, you were hearing the FM9, that's the preset that I made on it, and then I captured it on the quad cortex. The caveat with this is that I feel like you lose a fair amount in these captures, in my opinion. I don't I haven't A B kind of blind tested this, so it'd be very difficult to do as one person in a room, but um it seems to me that you lose quite a bit of touch sensitivity and Compared to playing the real FM9 preset, you lose some of the sag stuff, some of the bits that change over time. So it, although tonally it might sound similar-ish, the, the feel changes and the way that it responds to picking over time, you know, where you have like sag in the middle of a note or sizzle, these kind of things, it doesn't really get those. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
so there is a limit in that regard to the quad cortex. The other clear advantage for me and something I think is an area that now that the quad cortex exists I imagine we may see more of this sort of thing um, where you're kind of miniaturizing a very powerful device. So obviously we know the Helix and the FM9 might be relatively comparable in terms of power or you know the Axe FX3 these things they're all very powerful devices until the quad cortex the smaller things except for the GT1000 core that's a, a notable exception and maybe even the Headrush MX5 tended to be less powerful than the, the flagship devices whereas obviously we know the quad cortex is about the size of an HX effect and has the processing power of pretty much all of the competitors and that's interesting to be able to have something that is this small and can fit in like a laptop bag and you can easily take it around hotel rooms and all that stuff and it can do a lot of things right and you could run into it certainly quite easily two guitars or vocal guitars um, like you could with a helix um, but it's clearly much smaller the FM9, on the other hand, to me, seems more like the sort of thing which this is very much a tourable uh, fly rigging thing, but I think it depends on the type of gig that you're doing. You know, if you're um, paying for flights yourself to China or something and you use a, a budget airline, this sort of thing is going to be quite heavy. This sort of thing is relatively, you know, large, it's not going to fit in a laptop bag. Um, so it might not be the best sort of carry-on hand luggage thing and it might not even be the best sort of thing to stick in a suitcase. Uh, it's going to mean that you're going to take a few less pairs of boxes or something like that, right? Um, however, on stage, having the Stribble scripts and all of this stuff, I think is a massive advantage to the FM9 um, versus what we get here at the moment. You can have like a stomp mode and... To me, there's still a little bit of a disconnect between what the button actually is and what I'm looking at on the screen because you can see like they're in different places. But I guess over time you might get a bit used to that anyway, so that'd be fine. Um, and then the other thing that we've got going on, you can't kind of combine these modes at the moment. So you've got like scene mode or you've got stomp mode or you've got preset mode. You've got not the same sort of thing that you can do in the FM9 where you can see that in this one layout I've got scenes, stomps, presets and looper. Um, there really is no competition for the fractal stuff in terms of flexibility of button switches. You can see these ones here toggle me between scenes. Um, this one takes me to a preset list. I can go back to scenes, I go back to presets. Um, I think if I rock these two here, I can get to uh, all of the layouts. And you know, it's just so much more powerful than anything else out there. Go to the looper, back to my scenes. Um, it's really, really, really powerful stuff. The other clear advantage for me is that if we go in and start to look at what's actually available, sort of reverb wise, you know, in terms of reverbs, you've got ambience, cave, hall, mind hall, modulated plate, plate lush, plate type, room, shimmer, spring. You know, we're starting to get more options in the quad cortex. But if we go and look at in the uh, fractal world, you know, you've got so much more going on here. You've got a bunch of cloud options, a bunch of spring options, a bunch of plate options, uh, more interesting reverbs, and then you know, when you actually get into any of the reverbs here, you've got this kind of basic page is basically what you would get on the Quad Cortex. We can get in, we can EQ, we can change crossovers, all of this sort of stuff, diffusion, modulation. It's just so much more powerful and that's across the board true of pretty much every single effect in the fractal world. Um, you know, so Again, I'll just show you delays on here. Um, we've got so many options um, in terms of BBD, stereo tape, 2290 with modulation. Um, all of this stuff, 
worn tape and that's just one type of delay we've actually got multi-tap delays as well now if we go in here you've got even more options and even more tweakability to the point where it's kind of unfair to even compare them at the stages that they're at uh, in my opinion because it's just basically night and day between equally if you go into the amps uh, we've got like nearly 300 amps that you can choose from 290 is the current count when you go into here amp wise a good selection of stuff but nothing like you know like you have options for multiple fender twins multiple fender princeton circuits in a way that you're just not anywhere near that uh in the quad cortex world uh let's just take a look at delays you've got ping pong dual delay simple delay slap back delay tape delay and when you actually select them they are you know relatively basic you've got low pass high pass feedback um something more akin to what you'd see in the line six helix although they don't actually have you know one of the benefits of the helix is that they are the delays tend to be modeling existing things and you also have quite a lot of options for delays in the helix now as well you know whether it's the stereo memory man options for multiple tape delays more interesting delays reverse delays all that sort of stuff this kind of stuff is just not here yet in the quad cortex world um and I don't think you should buy necessarily a device with it for certain in your mind that one day it will have those things. It quite possibly might and could potentially be quite likely that it does. But I don't think you can be certain of that sort of stuff. Equally, you know, like drive pedals, there's quite a good selection of drive pedals in the quad cortex at the moment. Very limited choices in terms of fuzz. The fractal stuff would take the advantage there. So those are kind of my thoughts on that. We could you know lengthen the video unnecessarily but that's kind of the choices that I would make would vary so if I was thinking that this is going to be more for home use and potentially something that I take out occasionally and maybe I think actually I don't need the the depth of tweaking that's available in the fractal world because I'm not doing that sort of stuff or you know maybe you think actually what's really important to me is a really good looper and a really compact device that is powerful um, then maybe you'd go for the Pod Cortex if you're thinking, right, I want depth of tone, I want tweakability, I want the most amount of options that are possible, and I want something that is really, really gig suitable. You know, shrivel scripts, now that I've had them, they're really, really useful, or colour coding equally, um, in a way that the Quad Cortex kind of isn't there yet. And flexible foot switching, like, like you know, We've got this situation where you're either choosing seams or you're choosing stomps. For gigging, I think this approach where you've got the hybrid, I think that will be coming to the quad cortex at some point. But as it is at the moment, you, if you've got a gig next week, that would be the way to go, right? I'd imagine. Um, if you are putting this thing on a, a bigger board, then I'd say the quad cortex has an advantage there, right? Um, but those are kind of my thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, I think we're getting close to a situation where you can actually get an FM9. So up until this point, most people couldn't get one. So this would have been a fairly pointless example of a comparison. But I think now I would say if you can get your hands on an FM9 for the money, you're getting, I think, a lot more for your money than you do in the Quad Cortex right now. Um, maybe in a few years this might be something worth revisiting but for now I don't know I think if people knew about the FM9 before the Quad Cortex came out this might have been the thing that you'd have been pre-ordering let me know if you disagree with any of that um, let me know if you've compared some of these uh, captures to the real thing do you think you lose any of the complexity of the tone this has been the case when I've captured my normal helix lead as well it sort of flattens it out a bit you lose some of that kind of touch dynamic stuff to be able to capture a tool is quite powerful obviously you can't do that in the fm9 either but if the capture doesn't quite get all of the magic of the original source then again that 
becomes a thing which has limited interest for me. Let me know if you want me to drop this preset into the cloud, the two Morgan rocks, and I'll do the same for the FM9 if you want. Catch you in another video soon. Cheers.